Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing our product review for the Blendjet 2 battery operated portable blender. So you ready? Let's get into this. Just a quick note, our reviews are based upon the things that we think are important. That might be a little bit different for you. So what we recommend doing is after watching our video, you watch a couple of other videos made by different content creators. That way you get a much wider range of opinions and ideas, and that'll help you make a much more informed buying decision. And that is the most important thing of all. This is the Blendjet 2 Portable Blender. You can see this thing is pretty simple. There's only one button on it that controls all of the functions. And the only other interface is the USB-C charging port. It does come with a USB-C charging cable, but like a growing number of things these days, you don't actually get anything that can plug into the wall. All you get is this cable, and it's up to you to get an adapter for this so you can plug it in. Your only other option is to plug this into a computer or something, or if you have outlets on your walls that already have USB charging on them, then you can plug it into that, but that is a tiny, tiny number of people. The fact that a wall adapter isn't included with this is sort of a big fail for me. I mean, what does that stuff cost? A buck or two? Anyway, it is what it is. You can see that this is the entire thing. You get a base, you get a screw on lid with a carrying handle, just comes off like that. And your actual cup just spins off of the machine right here. When you twist this off, you can see that red light start blinking. That's just a warning telling you that the cup is not properly attached. As you can see, if I just put this on here and I don't screw it on tight, it'll be blinking red like that. Also, it won't operate with it loose like this either. Once you have it tightened on there properly, it blinks white a couple of times. Anyway, when you want to clean this, this part comes off. This can go in the dishwasher. I don't really recommend putting plastics in the dishwasher, even if they say they're safe for it, because over time, it's going to turn this cloudy. And if that happens, it's going to look like crap. The base has a little silicone seal around the outside here. So when you put this back on, like so, it'll make a nice tight seal and nothing will leak out of the bottom. This is a portable blender, so when you drink out of it, you're drinking out of the entire thing, including the base. Obviously, you can't drink out of it with the base off of it because there's no bottom on this cup. Duh. It's got a six point stainless steel blade down here, which is kind of nice. I kind of like this lavender color, but if you don't like that, Blendjet does make a crap load of different colors for this thing. If you go on their website, you'll see there's tons and tons of them. Since I like having choices like that, to me, that is a welcome addition. As far as using this thing, this is the only lid that you get. So it is a screw on lid. I like that it has this strap on it and everything, but to be totally honest, I don't like the fact that you have to twist this entire thing Thing off in order to drink out of it. To me, this would have been a lot better if they had a spout top or something that could be opened or closed, but to have to twist this on and off every time I want to get a sip of smoothie out of here is sort of a pain in the neck. And if you're not going to drink your entire smoothie at one time, it's going to get old really fast, trust me. Location of the charge port is a little bit weird too because I would have expected it to be on the back but I guess that's not really that big a deal because I mean, you're not using it when you're charging it anyway, but it does look kind of funky being there on the front. I don't know, personal preference maybe. If you look on the back, you can see all the measurements here, both in ounces and in milliliters. That is sort of etched into the plastic here, so it's not gonna fade off or anything like that. And as far as measurements go, this is about three inches wide and just under nine and a half inches tall. So it's pretty compact, should fit into most gym bags and stuff like that, no problem. The battery on this does not come charged and it takes about an hour and a half to charge it up. So the first thing you should do when you get this out of the box is to plug it in. Otherwise, the first smoothie you make is gonna really piss you off. The light ring around the button will give you indications about how much battery life you have. A zero charge is gonna be flashing red and purple. A 50% charge is gonna be half purple and half blue. And a full charge, you're gonna have a solid blue light all the way around. The controls for this thing are super, super simple. If you wanna blend, you just push the button and it'll blend for 20 seconds. Just like that. If you wanna be in pulse mode, you'd push this button twice and then this thing will blink three times like that and then it'll turn just solid white and that means we are in pulse mode. If you don't do anything for five seconds, it's gonna turn back off and it's just gonna be off again and you'd have to put it back into pulse mode again if you wanna do that or if you just push it once, it would just do a regular blend again. So once again for pulse mode, we'll tap this twice, it'll blink a few times, 
turn white and then we can pulse it just like this. This blender has one extra feature called lock mode and that is basically when you're putting it in your bag, you can lock it so you can't accidentally turn it on. And to turn that lock mode on, you just hold this button down until it blinks purple three times. Like that. Then I can let go and now pushing the button won't do anything. It'll just blink at me, telling me it's in lock mode. To turn that off, we just do the same thing again and it'll blink blue instead. Like that and now it's turned back off. So I guess now we need to find out exactly how well this thing works. Remember, this is a portable blender. It's not really designed to replace your existing blender in your house. It's more to give you the convenience of bringing a blender around with you if you need one. Also, if you have an RV or something like that, it's kind of cool to keep something like that in there as well. So we're gonna try three different tests. First, we're gonna try to blend something really thick and make a banana smoothie. Then we're gonna make a strawberry smoothie with frozen strawberries. And then third, we're gonna try to make some nut butter in this. And I'm just gonna tell you up front, it's probably gonna suck at that because it's not really designed to do that. But we're gonna try it anyway, just to see what happens. All right. So first we're gonna throw in a little bit of milk. Then we're gonna take a medium banana, throw that in here as well. Let's break this up into a few pieces. Throw in a little bit of whey protein, just because. Then we'll blend this up and see how it does. All right, let's see what we got here. It's nice, it's not super thick, but then again, I put a lot of milk in here too. So we're not trying to make it that thick. But this actually looks pretty good. We're gonna give it one more blend to see if it thickens it a little bit more, just for shits and giggles. Yeah, and it's a little thicker, that's for sure. So not bad, and that actually made this a lot smoother too. You know what, we're gonna run this one more time. I'm gonna see how loud this is. All right, that jumped around a little bit, but it kind of looked like it was right around 82 decibels or so. So it's not whisper quiet, but it sure isn't loud either. One quick thing about this, I kind of don't like drinking out of this with the top twisted off because your lips are resting on the threads right here and it just feels kind of funny. I mean, I don't know how important that is to you, but to me it's a little bit of an oversight and it just makes it sort of feel like an unfinished product. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about that. Am I just crazy or does that sort of suck? On to the next test. Okay, test two is gonna be a little bit harder. So we're gonna throw in some frozen berries. Nice little combination. Top this off with some strawberries since those are a lot harder. We'll go ahead and use a little bit of milk again here. Just give it a little, little liquid and we'll see how this fares. Whoa, that didn't like that at all. Well, that's having trouble turning that, which is kind of funny because we didn't do anything yet. Let's try giving this thing a little help and turning it around a little. Okay, well that kind of got stuck. So let's shake this up a little bit, shall we? Try it again. That kind of sucked. It looks like we're stuck again. It's looking like this is having a hard time turning this around, but to be totally honest, this isn't really very thick right now. I mean, it's soft serve ice cream consistency right now. Let's see if it does better now. Oh, no, it is not having a good time. Granted, probably not really what this thing is designed for. In fact, there's a real limit on the amount of frozen stuff that you can put into this. We're probably asking a little bit too much of this thing. Let's try adding in a little bit more milk here. Maybe that'll help it. Mix that in a little bit to try to help this out a little. That's really gotten this loosened up, so hopefully that's enough. Oops. Looking like it's handling that better, but you can see a big spot on top here that's not actually blending. Oh, nope, it got stuck again. So as you can see, this is not replacing your existing blender. 
Just remember, it's also not designed to do that and it doesn't claim to do that either. But if you're in the market for something like this, you have to keep that kind of stuff in mind. You know, just to be fair, we're gonna do the smoothie test one more time. And we're also gonna be using a little bit less fruit along with a little bit more liquid. We only had four ounces of liquid in there before, so we're really just gonna fill this up most of the way. That should give this thing a much better chance of getting a good blend. Okay, let's try it out. Oh man. Okay, well, oh, all right. Well, it's kind of getting stuck, but it's letting us go again anyway. Oh, there it goes. Okay, well, that did it. By the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. All right, now we're going to do a nut butter test. And you can tell by all these scratches that I really ruined this thing by using that knife to try to stir that frozen smoothie around. Oh, look at that. That's pretty gnarly. Oh, well. Whatever. Now, we're gonna try to do some nut butter. And I'll tell you what, this doesn't bode very well, but I guarantee you, if I don't do this test, somebody is gonna ask me about it in the comments. That seems to be plenty, and we're gonna see how this fares. This thing is still hot from before. Wow, interesting, okay. I mean, eventually we're gonna get nut butter out of this, but is it really worth that kind of time? Well, maybe if we help it out and add a tiny bit of oil to this or something. Normally that's just gonna make it stick more, but why not try it, right? If you'd like to learn some more about Joe's Phenomenal, you can either watch a couple more videos or you can check us out online at joesphenomenal.com. Whoa, looks like our battery is now dead. So we got about 16 blends out of this thing before the battery went dead. So that's something to keep in mind. Oh, and hey, look, this is actually pretty okay peanut butter after all that. That is, if you don't mind all that effort, it did do it. And it's definitely a pain in the neck to get out of here. The problem with something like this is that the blades are down in there, and if I were to take this off, it's just gonna go all over the place. Is it worth it just to get one extra spoonful of peanut butter? No, not really, unfortunately. I mean, it's pretty good, but I had to really put a lot of effort into that. Admittedly, that was a little bit disappointing. I was kind of hoping this thing would do just a little bit better than that, but I really didn't expect a whole lot. It handled our banana smoothie no problem. The smoothie with the frozen fruit was sort of a non-starter. And although it did eventually make that peanut butter, it took a way longer time than it needed to and it totally drained the battery as well. But in any case, we did get about 20 full blends out of it before the battery did finally give up. At the end of the day, it's just an okay portable blender. It could probably blend your green smoothies and your stuff from the gym, but be careful not to put too much frozen stuff in there because it's not gonna be able to handle that. And obviously you're probably not gonna wanna do nut butters and stuff like that in this. Just remember that if you wanna get one of these, it's definitely not gonna be able to replace a plug-in blender, even a cheap one. For me personally, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say there's probably better travel blenders out there. If you'd like a little bit more information about the BlendJet 2 Portable Blender, we do have an Amazon affiliate link to it down in the description of the video. If you buy anything through those links, we do make a small commission, but it doesn't change the price that you pay one cent. If you like this video, you might like this video right here where we review the Ninja Foodie Power Blender Ultimate System. That not only can handle all your blending, but it can also handle all your food processing chores, including stuff with discs. Well, that's it for now. I hope to see you back again here really soon, and until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.